Are you nervous to be back? After what's transpired over the last couple months, am I excited to be back to this type of world? <laughs> Man. Oh. So glad you're back. Hey, I appreciate it, Shane. It's good to be back to a certain degree, right? We got to figure out this monetization thing. So September 25th is, is basically when we can reapply for partnership on YouTube, you know? People ask, like, do I... Now that you're not getting monetized, you're not going to be streaming ever again or you're on YouTube, are you? I, I'm. There's an opportunity to reapply, right? September 25th is the date. So in the meantime, we'll, we'll do what we need to do. Uh, I enjoy my time here on YouTube. You know, we've built a nice, strong community for years. This is where we started 16 years ago. 2008, I think. You know? I like my time here and I like the community. It's we've got the best realist gaming community, right? The champions club. And we've, we've built it on this platform and this is, and if there's an opportunity to reapply for partnership and there's a date that's been presented to us, then I'm going to take it in the meantime. Like we always done, we've always stayed in our lane. We'll stay in our lane and continue to just put on a show. You know? For almost four years, champs, the public demanded to hear from the doc regarding the Twitch suspension. I guess since you all missed the point with my personal statement, Maybe it's time to tell my side of the story. Huh, champs? You see, there was a lawsuit pending. And as part of that arbitration, all parties were not allowed to speak publicly about the case. <laughs> I respected those rules. My lawsuit against Twitch was eventually resolved, as you all know. But even then, as part of the settlement, all parties were still prohibited from speaking publicly about the case or the settlement. However, if one side violated that confidentiality, then the other side could respond. And again, champs, again, I respected all the confidential obligations. <laughs> mm -mm. But apparently Twitch's own disgruntled employees didn't feel the need to abide by those same obligations. Cody Connors, ex-Twitch employee, wasn't even involved, leaks Twitch's reported reason. Years later, Cody, why, why, you, why do this? What was the point? This was settled professionally. And you, knowing how black and white the internet is, you decided, you fucking rat, to leak the reported reason Twitch banned me in 2020. Well, I mean, for what, Cody? Why? Did you not know the repercussions from spewing lies about the two time? Did you not know the repercussions of accusing me, Cody Connors? You see, you don't know shit. And it was obvious from your tweet. You didn't have any firsthand knowledge of my dispute with Twitch. You said that I got banned from Twitch because I was sexting a minor through whispers messages. <laughs> do you even know what the legal definition of sexting is? I do. And yeah, I used Twitch's whispers, but trust me, I wasn't sexting anyone. You also said the word minor, Cody. I even made sure that word was 
emphasized in my statement, edited, etc., just to make sure these so-called journalists would pick up on it. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, did they ever, champs. When you and all these so-called journalists, Cody, fired off your tweets, did any of you consider that the Twitch user may have been over the legal age of consent at the time of the messages? You didn't. Neither did any of these journalists and neither did Twitch at the time of the ban. You also tried to tell the world that I was trying to meet up with this user at TwitchCon, but you're wrong. Let's set the record straight. I never intended to meet this user ever. We never made plans to meet at TwitchCon or anywhere else. And in fact, we n never met in person ever. Your bullshit accusations gave false courage to other former Twitch employees to make shit up as well. I suspect all of you sort of planned and coordinated this attack. These big time publications, these, these journalists, these various outlets are sort of just gossip, gossip channels now. Don't you think champs? They act like they're just gossip channels now without any real journalism and real research happening. They report on all this based on leaks from two former Twitch employees, one of whom was supposedly on the trust and safety team. If these anonymous sources worked on the trust and safety team at the time of my Twitch suspension in 2020, then you would hope they would tell the truth. But apparently that's just too much to ask. If these former trust and safety team members, and by the way, I know exactly who they are, <laughs> actually had first-hand knowledge, then what they conveniently left out is, one, Twitch's trust and safety team, the same employees that decided to ban me, internally admitted that the whisper messages were not sexting. And two, Twitch's trust and safety team, the same employees that decided to ban me, internally acknowledged that the whispers did not constitute child sexual abuse material CSAM. I'll say it again, neither I, nor the Twitch user exchanged any sexual graphic messages or images. Cody Connors and these other anonymous sources are trying to paint a picture that I was exchanging sexually explicit messages and photos with this Twitch user. That never happened. I even used the word inappropriate, purposely. And look at how it was defined by everyone, champs. Huh? Including these defaming articles. I'm sorry, but... Mutual bantering with inappropriate jokes taken out of context should have never led to me getting banned from Twitch in the first place. I mean, how would each of you look if all of your private DMs, your text messages, your chats were looked at, dissected, and taken out of context by someone who's deliberately trying to find something inappropriate in those words? And this is not a situation where a victim publicly accuses someone of wrongdoing. That never happened here. We're talking about allegations that Twitch made against me as a half-baked reason for justifying their actions of suspending and shutting down my channel. Allegations that Twitch made without even a legal analysis of whether the whisper messages were legal. You see, I engage with my community. I engage with other streamers. And through Twitch whispers, I communicate with Twitch users. Conversations that consisted of a variety of playing games and gaming politics, content creation, random stuff. This was the extent of my whispers with this Twitch user. On June 21st, 2020, my ex Twitch partner manager learns that I exchanged whispers with the Twitch user. <laughs> and I say ex partner manager because for years, this guy didn't do anything for me, my community, or my channel for years. I'm talking no front page love. You're talking about the face of the platform, right? Literally, the face of the platform. We heart, and I know Champions Club remembers this. We got, we got zero front page love on the website. Uh, he was never on my channel. He didn't follow me on Twitter. He, he wouldn't even inform us about Twitch rival tournaments. We're talking about the two time Twitch rival tournament. Oh, I'm sorry. I, God, I, would you, would you want to play in it? 
we got zero support from this guy. And it was just so obvious that he carried a grudge against the two time. So after we signed with Twitch in 2019, we asked for a new partner manager. And just a few months later, that ex Twitch partner manager is directly involved with getting me banned. <laughs> Coincidence? The Twitch user tells the ex Twitch partner manager that they do not want to report anything to Twitch. I'll repeat that sentence one more time just in case anybody missed that one. The Twitch user tells this ex Twitch partner manager that they do not want to report anything to Twitch. But this ex Twitch partner manager encourages the user and even directs them to file a report directly with Twitch, even though the user told them clearly that we never physically met anywhere and that no photographs were exchanged. On June 24th, 2020, Twitch's special operations team receives and reviews the user's report. They find no issues and determine that it did not warrant any further escalation to Twitch's law enforcement response team. <clears throat> that would have been the end. <laughs> that should have been the end. But that partner manager, oh boy, oh boy, did he had it out. He had, he had it out for the two time. He finds out that no further action will be taken. So what does he do? He personally escalates the report to a friend on the Twitch's LER team. The LER team, remember, that's the Twitch's law enforcement response team. He escalates the report to a friend on Twitch's LER team. So a day later, on June 25th, the LER analyst pulls the entirety of the whisper messages and begins discussing them with his director of the LER team. Mind you, this director is on vacation at that time and does not have access to their computer or work files. L let me just remind you, I went through a multi-year, multi a, a, a big time arbitration, okay? And uh, you know, you discover a lot of stuff. Mind you, this director is on vacation at that time. The LER analyst cherry picks and sends a few targeted excerpts out of context from the whisper messages to this director. Now, if you do this, you can make anyone's messages look inappropriate, even when they aren't. Within less than one hour, this LER analyst and his director have made the decision to suspend me from Twitch. Twitch submits a report to NCMEC. You guys all read those little articles, huh? The NCMEC. Twitch submits that report. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Guess what? As far as I know, and over four years have passed, they didn't do anything with the report. As far as I know, they didn't escalate Twitch's report to law enforcement. <laughs> Mind you, the same people that made this decision admit internally that the messages did not constitute sexting. The same people that made this decision at Twitch admit internally that the messages did not warrant any child sexual abuse material charge. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me while admitted they did not perform any legal analysis of whether the messages exchanged were legal in any way. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me while admitting that they never investigated the age of consent in the jurisdiction where the user's messages were sent and received. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me without ever interviewing me, the user, or any other third party, including the partner manager. It's fucking unbelievable! I'm not going to get into every detail regarding my legal case, <clears throat> but these former Twitch employees that claim to have firsthand knowledge, they just don't have a clue. They didn't report any facts. The judge in the case determined that the whispers were not illegal. <laughs> so then why did Twitch use these messages against me? I, I, 
Why did Twi Twitch treat the doc so differently from their other streamers? I mean, outside of the obvious. I mean, just take a look at me. <laughs> Unfiltered. The realest motherfucker in this industry. Six foot eight. Gorgeous, athletic, successful, college degree, college athlete, bourbon business, gaming studio, beautiful family. And trust me, we've worked hard for over a decade to improve as a person, a husband, and father, and to get where we're at today. I mean, I'm in such a good place today. And all these people, they all act like they're just so perfect. I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect. Eh, sometimes I do. But I also didn't do all the shit that they're saying I did. But then that doesn't make a story, right? They wanted media attention. The media wants controversy. And by sensationalizing all this with big and accurate headlines like sexting and sexually explicit, you all got what you wanted at the expense of the tube time. The reality is they wanted to cut down the dock, plain and simple. Take a look at some of these horrendous acts of Twitch streamers that were never banned. I've got some examples right here. Example number one, a streamer that frequently used the N word while publicly streaming, which constitutes a violation of Twitch's policies if accompanied by hateful intent. Twitch scheduled a meeting with the streamer to ascertain his intent to determine whether his contact was a violation of Twitch's policies, ultimately determining it was not a breach of Twitch's policies. Why wasn't I called into a, into a meeting? Why wasn't my intent taken into consideration, champs? Hmm. Example number two. Streamer was reported for discussing doing things with deceased animals and discussing pedophilia all while live streaming never suspended but instead given a multi-million dollar contract example number three streamer was reported for a sexually explicit stream involving children and telling children to send snapchats of them playing with themselves never suspended but instead hmm, given a multi-million dollar contract It's so obvious that certain Twitch executives, employees involved had personal biases against the doc and used all of this as an opportunity to terminate my contract. Go back and look at the timing of all this too. Huh. The doc's termination lines up with two preferable, profitable, and expensive streamers leaving Mixer. As soon as Twitch knew that Mixer had failed, and go look at the timing. These other expensive streamers needed a new streaming platform. So Twitch rushed through its decision to terminate the tube time. You see, I shouldn't even be banned from Twitch. It has affected us on so many levels. Back in 2020, and now in 2024. And Cody, Connors, I just have to say it again. Why would you do this? Like I said, this was handled professionally years ago. No fucking wrongdoing. But because of you, Cody, we just lost, ah, fuck, man. Unfortunately, we have to lay off people from Midnight Society. Right? Because of you, Cody. Mm. 
you know, through all this, we are where we are. And like a fucking man, I'll accept it. What I don't accept is sitting quietly by and let these idiots attack me with false accusations. No. For all these doc haters out there too, oh man. The ones that project and project and project and project and worry about everyone else's problems, right? I, I can't understand that mindset. I don't give, I could care less. We've always stayed in our lane. But somehow, some way, these people, they just get in our lane. For all you doc haters, I'm sure you'll dissect, dissect all of this and still find a way to publicly criticize me. Do what you need to do. I'll say this, this isn't for you. This was for my team today, my community, my friends, la familia that have supported me. And I'm not denying the exchange of whispers, champs. I'm not denying that to, to all of you out there, it looks bad. I have no way of knowing if the Twitch users thought our exchange of whispers was inappropriate. If it was, I apologize. All I, all I know is that I never did what Twitch, Cody Connors, or the public is claiming that I did. That's it. I'm not saying anything more about any of this, right? Unless I need to, because trust me, I have more. I haven't disclosed. I just want to get back to what we do best. Put on a show. And climb our way to the tippity top of the mountain, man. In our own lane.